Hi, it's Rob Moore here. Now, we were having a quite in-depth discussion yesterday. Uh, I did a Q&A with the billionaire David McCourt. I invited about 100 of my supporters to come uh, and be in the live audience. We hired out a lovely cinema room uh, at the British Transport Museum. We had a great time. And of course, the subject of money is coming up when you're in a very small room with a billionaire. And he was talking a lot that he wasn't really focused on money and he didn't really care about money. And, and, and I sort of pushed back and said, well, you, you say you've had massive boats, you say you've had uh, planes. It's all right for you to say money isn't really that important to you now, now that you've had it all. Let us have billions, try all these things and then give it away. But actually, it raised a really great uh, point about the relationship between wealth and spirituality. It was a question that was raised in the group. And it reminded me of, of a very, very profound quote that Dr. John Demartini uh, told me a few years ago. And that is, spirit without matter is expressionless and matter without spirit is motionless. So spirit without matter is expressionless and matter without spirit is motionless. And I think that's really worth considering. And I'm going to give you a few points in this video to think about. If you'd like to ideally be wealthy and have material items that make you feel good, but also be very spiritual and considerate and caring of others and not too materialistic. And generally you get people that are either side of the extreme. They're either would consider themselves in their own definition very spiritual but therefore they may be anti-materialistic or perceive that materialism is somehow bad or greedy or powerful or wrong. And then of course there are the people that are very focused on making money and wealth and you might deem as somewhat material or um, you know, chasing money and they're, they're, they may not deem themselves as material, but they would certainly look for experiences which cost money. And I don't think that the two can be separated. I think it's the human construct and, and our mind that is confused and separates um, wealth and material with uh, spiritual, like they're different. Now, this quote and certainly some of the work from Dr. John Demartini and my research over the last, what, 12 years um, would indicate actually that they're inseparable or you don't have to separate them. So spirit without matter is expressionless. Matter without spirit is motionless. So let's explain that. So spirit without matter is expressionless. So whatever being spiritual is, if it doesn't take a physical form, a human form, a material form, then it doesn't express itself. Uh, uh, OK, you know, yes, it could be a thought, but until it manifests into something physical, there is no expression of the spirituality. So even the most spiritual people in the world, they were expressing their spiritual form through the material. It took a great amount of wealth to take uh, Gandhi around the world, by the way, a huge amount of money to travel him. Uh, uh, it was funny because Grant Cardone said to me, if Jesus or Mother Teresa was alive today, they'd need a private jet. <laughs> uh, and he was kind of being flippant, but they would, wouldn't they? To get around the world and, and, and share their mission to the masses, you're not going to walk in your sandals, OK, maybe being a bit stereotypical. But, you're, you know, how do you express the spirit, travel the spirit, get the spirit out to the masses? Well, you need the material items and the wealth behind you to accelerate and create the speed and the momentum to do that. So I wrote in my book Money uh, that actually one of the most spiritual things to do is to uh, purchase own, love and share great material items. Now, there's a, a, a beautiful, um, I, I guess it's a, a, almost a way of living and being. You could call it an advertising slogan, but I think it's way more than that, by Patek Philippe. And that is, you never really own a Patek Philippe. You merely um, borrow it for the next generation. I've probably butchered the quote, but you know what I mean. So a, a Patek Philippe is probably one of the most beautiful watches that can be made. Uh, and yes, they're expensive and they can be 50, 100, 200, 500,000 pounds, which, of course, many people would deem to be very anti-spiritual and that money could go into the third world, etc. But the, amount, the, the watchmaker's art and, you know, lifetime of study and service to watchmaking uh, that they put and express their spirit through their soul and into this watch. 
Uh, and then, of course, it pays their mortgage and their children's school fees, etc., cetera, um, and, and sustains a, a, an ecosystem and an economy in a, a very small watchmaking hub of the world. Uh, and, of course, someone owns that and, and connects with people who own that watch and uh, are very much like us. Oh, and someone who owns a Patek Philippe, we must have a lot in common. And that watch may last 200 years and go to our children and our children's children and all the memories of your father and your father's father go through that watch as you put it on your wrist and you see it. Uh, and I believe that's a very spiritual thing. Now, if we separate them into extremes, being purely material is, of course, um, you know, maybe overly greedy and powerful, but you don't need to be like that. Uh, and maybe being overly spiritual might be deemed to be a little bit hippie or ethereal or, um, you know, you don't have to self-negate and have extreme poverty around you to be spiritual. You don't have to give it all away and, you know, live in one set of robes your whole life. So I believe mastery of life, the wholeness of life, the life balance, uh, the gifts of life that you receive and you give equally are in the fusion and merging of the spiritual and the material. Uh, now, if you want to give a lot of away, which I know you want to do, let's be honest, it's a very spiritual act to help people. Um, I think David McCourt said, he says, put the ladder down for someone else. Um, you know, I, I see a lot of people doing um, finance raises on social media. My good friend, uh, Jay Alderton, will become my good friend recently. Um, but I've always followed him and I think he's great. He just did a box jump and got a world record for the number of box jumps. And I, I was able to donate a decent amount of money to, for his world record attempt. And every time I see someone do a little raise for a charity, or whatever, I'm able to give 250 quid or 500 quid or 1,000 quid or 3,000 quid. Uh, and that is because I've earned money and leveraged the capital system and being an entrepreneur and created wealth through fair exchange. Uh, and I have a pair of speakers here. They're Wilson Audio, Sasha, DAWs. They're £45,000, so they're not cheap. Uh, but someone comes and listens to the speakers, because by the way, I love listening to music, I absolutely love it. But sitting there on my own, it's, it's a great experience. But sitting someone else there and li listening, having them listen to their favourite song and see them come alive and hear sounds they've never heard before, that's a very spiritual act. Um, I, I brought one of my friends over a few weeks ago and he played vinyl and he got really emotional. He almost cried because he, he connected with the music on a very spiritual level. And of course, he, he felt the emotion of the artist um, that was expressing uh, through, the, through the vinyl, the warm vinyl. Um, and so the, if you embrace the material and spiritual as one, uh, then uh, the spirit comes through the material. So I guess that's my way of saying it's OK to have some nice things without being greedy. It's OK to want to be rich and wealthy so that you can travel and live in luxury. Uh, the three commonalities of the richest people in history. Uh, one of them is their um, belief that they deserve opulence uh, and, and having opulence in your life uh, or people who believe that those who have opulence in their life is to the detriment of others. That is a very scarce mindset. Uh, and someone who lives an opulent lifestyle is not opulent having taken away from, you know, a thousand or a million people in the developed world, developing world, in the third world. It's not binary like that. Money and wealth doesn't act in that way. And in fact, you creating wealth and then doing great things with it is often a great way to redistribute wealth. So people talk a lot about, oh, well, wealth needs to be redistributed. Well, that is what taxation does, by the way. Um, and many billionaires are doing a fantastic job of redistributing wealth. Um, Bill Bartman, a billionaire who's famously giving it all away. Um, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett have given billions, tens of billions away um, to charity. Uh, and, you know, the responsibility has grown on them to do good things with their wealth. Um, and society has somewhat intimidated them into being more responsible with their billions. And they are, and they're stepping up to the mark. Now, they couldn't if they weren't billionaires. And so you, you can leverage the capital system and you can leverage being an entrepreneur and you can do great, great things with your wealth. That could be passing on to children. That could be inspiring others. You know, I, I, I know it's uh, maybe a little bit of a superficial item, but my Lamborghini Aventador does inspire a lot of people. And no one looks at you in a shitty, rusty banger and goes, I want to be like that person. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to sacrifice. You know, I'm going to be someone. I'm going to do something. I'm going to step up. I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to, uh, you know, share my legacy with the masses and change the world because I saw that rusty B-Reg Vauxhall Brown Nova and it inspired me. No, it doesn't work like that. Now, look, I'm not here to judge. I'm here to try and um, explain and express to you what I believe the ideal balance in life is. 
Uh, and for me, if I buy a nice material item, I know that I've um, invested in that company. Uh, then that company continue to grow and pay its staff and pay its business rates. And the staff pay their mortgage and their kids, etc. Uh, now, as long as I'm wise with my money and I'm not buying liabilities with money I can't afford, uh, and I may be um, you know, buying assets that go up or when I treat myself, I buy at the lower, lowest point of the depreciation curve, then I'm not addicted to material items and wealth and I'm not using that to create um, debt. Uh, and for me, one of the, the lovely sweet spot in, in life is to be able to buy nice material items that I get pleasure and passion and enjoyment out of and see them go up in value. So I bought a Ferrari Testarossa uh, and I just love looking at it. I drive it a few times a year in the summer. Uh, and it, it reminds me of being a child when I always wanted Ferraris and I was really into cars and I feel like it's something that maybe I might even hand, hand on to my son one day and just looking at that makes me realise the beauty in that car and the work and the art and the spirituality through you know the car makers uh, and it's probably gone up to 150 grand now and I think I paid 105 for it so that's a, a pretty good win 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 all the way around. Um, again, like I said, I'm not here to preach to you about uh, what you should do with your money or how you should be with your money. I'm here to just maybe um, let you embrace a bit more that it's okay to have some material items that give you pleasure. Uh, it, uh, those material items can give other people pleasure too. Uh, that can be a very spiritual act. Uh, and knowing that a material and spiritual are one and not separable means that you can embrace both, both sides of what usually people really separate. And I think if you're really honest, go on, be really honest. Do you want a nice car or a shit car? Be honest. Tell me in the thread. Do you want a nice car or a shit car? Just, you know, a banger or a nice car? If, if no one were to judge, no one, no one were to say anything about you being opulent or uh, a scarce mindset of taking from others. What about a house? Would you like a lovely house or a shit house? You tell me. Uh, and I reckon that, that, that you'd probably want some nice things. Now, let's say you're not that material. But uh, by the way, nearly everyone who I've met who says, oh, I'm not material at all. But it's not about materialism they often have nice material items. They say it's not about that. Or they spend thousands of pounds on first class travel. Or they, they buy really nice um, hotels. And they say, oh, well, I'm creating memories. Well, um, driving Lamborghinis and Ferraris and wearing Patek Philippe's and having people coming over listening to my speakers. For me, that also creates memories. So uh, again, I'm gonna summarize this now because otherwise I know I'll get on my high horse and I'll start to preach. And this isn't really about preaching. Um, so spirituality, sorry, spirit without matter is expressionless. Matter without spirit is motionless. Merge the spiritual and the material. For me, it's a, a great thing to give gifts. And I like to buy expensive gifts for people. And it makes me feel, you know, very warm. And uh, it's just a lovely feeling. Now, I have to be able to run a good business and make good fair profit margins to be able to buy lots of uh, expensive gifts for people. And it's something that uh, I've become quite well known for and I really like to do, often makes me feel better than buying stuff myself for me. So you could say, oh, oh, well, you know, I'm not material, but if I'm using material items to give other people happiness, I'm, I'm leveraging the spirituality in materialism. Someone said to me, if you want to make a woman happy, borrow a Chanel handbag. <laughs> well, you know, mm, something, something in that perhaps. If you want to make me happy, buy me Alexander McQueen. All right, so have a think about that. Maybe try and challenge your own beliefs about wealth and spirituality and riches and, 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 and maybe if you've separated them and maybe if you judge others and how you judge others and what you would really want in your life um, if you weren't judged by others. Because for me, there's no doubt that money is a driving force. And I believe I'm more centred and balanced about it now. I was money hungry when I was skinned. Here's an irony. Often people who are multimillionaires or billionaires say it's not about the money and they're not focused on the money. But the people who are skinned are focused on the money and say it's all about the money because they haven't got any money. So often a way you can become less focused on material items or less greedy, I suppose, or less hungry for money is to make good money and have money not a problem anymore. And when money isn't a problem in your life, then you're not uh, overly materialistic. And, and, that, and that certainly happened with me. And then the, the, the ironic paradox is as soon as you're more comfortable with money and it's, you're not money hungry, money tends to flow much more easily uh, and um, effortlessly and abundantly to you because you're probably working in the right areas of um, spirituality and, and giving and value and fair exchange, which, you know, which tend to bring a, a lot more money in. So, yeah, just challenge how you think about that and how you embrace the two. Um, and uh, I'll leave you with that one. Thank you for tuning in. Now, this is going to go on the Money Podcast. 
Uh, and also coming soon on The Money Podcast, we have got that interview with The Billionaire. It's only the second interview on My Money Podcast. One was uh, from a chap who wrote How to Be a Billionaire, and now one is from a billionaire. So make sure you subscribe to My Money Podcast, which you can find on iTunes and Stitcher, uh, you know, and any, any other podcast platform, uh, because I think you'll really love it, and I think it will challenge your thoughts, your thought process. I feel like my job is to challenge how you think, to get you to think different, to maybe help you disrupt yourself uh, it's okay if you don't agree with me because everyone is entitled to my opinion. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.